Now that you've figured out all that's going on, it's time to try and limit the damage. When it comes to containing the incident, you need to decide how to proceed. There are several options you have when it comes to containment. The choice of a particular option has to do with the goals you have established for this incident. Do you let the incident run? This means that you'll do more monitoring and find out more about what's going on. There are any number of situations where you'll want to choose this option. You'll want to let the incident continue on so that you can study it more. By doing this, hopefully, you'll be able to understand what it is the attacker is trying to do. You'll not always understand the motivation and the desire of the attack but just by looking at the log files and what's been done to the system. Isolation is another option. You might want to remove the host or the system that's been compromised from the network. Or you might want to set up a trap by creating a virtual machine of the host thereon and let them play on it in a controlled environment so that you can see what they're doing. Or you might just bring everything down and reset the system and start over. How you decide which option to use depends on a number of factors and will change from incident to incident. You need to know what your procedures say on each option and follow them. You will need the information from your contact lists and know who it is you need to contact. Their input might be needed on a particular option. Even if they do not need to be consulted on which option you pursue, you will still need to let people know what you're doing. Include information as to what steps you have taken and what steps you are going to be making. The SANS Handbook on Incident Response lays out three steps in incident containment. The first is short term. This is where you try to limit the damage as much as possible and get things back to a normal state. Short term fixes are about isolating the problem. Can the system be taken offline? Are there other things you could do to keep the problem contained on the current system? By isolating the affected machine, you're able to protect the rest of your systems and hopefully limit the damage. All short-term containment is attempting to do is limit the damage of the incident. It is an immediate fix for a specific problem and not the long-term solution. With a short-term containment strategy in place, you can look at securing any evidence that might be available on the system. Taking a snapshot of the system would be a good step. This allows you to archive any history files or any other changes made to the system for analysis. If your long-term containment strategy is to wipe the system and reinstall, then all of this information will be lost. As we mentioned before, you want to keep as much information about each incident as possible. This is very true in the case of an intrusion. Taking a backup of the system will do this. Long-term containment is the last step. That's where you actually deal with the problem and figure out how to get the system back up and running. This might be a reinstall or some other action. You are focused on removing accounts, files, tools, or backdoors that might have been created or left in order for the attacker to be able to return. During this step, you will also be installing any patches on the affected system and all related systems that would help remove the vulnerability that was exploited. The goal is to get the system back up and running so that it can be put into service again. Recovery is about bringing the systems back up to production. It's really important at this point to have identified what they did, but when they started, so you can go back to the proper time point and reset. Sometimes this might be going back a long way, and in the worst cases, it might be months. You need to be sure that the system is in a clean working state again. Once you have restored the system, it's a good idea to test everything before you put it back into production. Newly installed patches might adversely affect services. You don't want to tell people the system's restored and back up and running, only to have the users get upset because everything is crashing and not working. Also, continue to monitor for signs that you might have missed something. You should have a good idea of what to look for based on the incident you just completed. Watch for those things. The only way you can know if the incident is really eradicated is by truly understanding what happened. You do this by using all the information you have to identify when they started, what they were trying to accomplish, what the attack vector was, and their motivation. Identifying these things helps you to know that you really understand what happened. By understanding this, you'll be able to identify what needs to be done to the system to restore it and to prevent the problem from happening again. 
Make sure you've checked for any back doors and that you've closed them. Take a close look at all configuration files and make sure nothing was changed that would allow someone to get back onto the system. Documenting lessons learned is an important step that is often overlooked. Doing a good job in this phase only helps to improve your security plan and your incident response capabilities. By having thorough documentation of the incident, you'll be able to learn from any incident that occurred. This will help your organization improve the team's performance and provide reference materials in the event of a similar incident. The documentation can also be used as training materials for new team members or as a benchmark to be used in comparison in future crises. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI, one, two, three, four, four, oh, eight.